right? So, can you guys see my screen now? Yes, sir. All right. So, there's actually, there were actually 26 students who are enrolled in the subject. And as of now, there, there's only 14, including me. So, there's 13 more students who are not here yet. But anyway, since this is the first uh, class of the day, so they might be expecting that we're not going to discuss anything. But they're wrong with that. Well, anyway, so uh, as you guys can see, we already have here the week one, module one. Okay, I just published it a while ago. So to those who haven't submitted uh, the video, one minute video introducing yourself uh, in this week zero, please submit them now so that I can learn uh, more about you and then your expectations uh, with this course. And one thing that I've noticed is most of you who have already submitted their video, okay, most of you are expecting that this subject is difficult. Okay, and then some of you are really expecting that, you know, you want to have a challenging and yet interesting or interesting yet challenging uh, subject or electrical circuits uh, subject. Well, let me tell you guys this one. For the midterms, maybe it's easy, but for the finals, okay, since due to the you know lack of time, like every meeting we're going to discuss two topics and then two different methods. So you have to practice a lot of it and then you know you're going to have a quiz. So yeah, you really need to uh, have a fast pace uh, in learning uh, theorems or methods in solving things. But for uh Week one, week two, and then week three. So it's composed of Ohm's law, series, and then parallel. So some of you might already know how to solve a parallel connection. So this one is uh, quite easy. But when it comes to finals, that's the time that you're going to have a hard time in solving this. All right. So before we will start with our week one, module one. So let me just show you guys the syllabus of this subject. So just go on to this upper left, then you will so this one syllabus. So just click that one and it will lead you to this interface. So as you guys can see, this one is a three units lecture. Okay, and here's the course uh, description. Wherein you're going to learn about the relationships of voltage, the uh, resistance, current, etc. etc. And then we're uh, going to talk about circuit theory, the mesh, node equations, resistive networks. Network theorems, which is one of the hardest part, and then solutions of network problems using Laplace transform. So I'm afraid that we might not be able to uh, reach this one due to you know having so much topics and then having uh, a very uh, minimum time in uh, our current situation right now. Okay, and then transient analysis and then methods of circuit analysis, and then here's the course learning outcomes. So of course we'll start with DC. Okay, actually in everything, uh, we'll just talk about DC. But in some cases, we'll also you know ten percent TV. We'll also talk about AC. But in most examples and most questions, we're only going to talk about DC. Okay, so we'll talk about the uh, electrical parameters and concepts, electrical parameters at a given circuit, simplifying a network from uh, a linear electrical components in application different theorems and methods. And then lastly, solving problems in application of different principles, theorems, and laws in this circuit. Okay. So this is the most important part when it comes to learning about things in a, one subject. So you guys must aware of the syllabus uh, of such or of one specific subject. So in this case, or in this subject, we have this coverage. So, so you guys can see for week one, we have a lot of things that we need to discuss. But I'm afraid that we won't be able to finish this one right now. Okay, so maybe it will take uh, it will uh yeah take us one week and three days, like 1.5. Okay, not exactly one week, but uh maybe it's possible. Okay, that we'll be able to finish this one in just one week. So this meeting and then next meeting. Okay, so for today we will only talk about the basics of. Ohm's law and then the electric power and then heat and then energy. 
Okay, so we'll just go over on the basics of those. And then next meeting, which will be on Friday, we'll talk about the series circuit. So lots and lots of exam uh, examples of series circuit. And then parallel circuit, which is also, of course, lots and lots and lots of examples of parallel circuit. And then lastly, of course, we're going to have the series parallel or parallel series circuits. But actually, in reality, this one is just a complex parallel circuit. Okay, this one's just much more complicated than just a parallel circuit. Okay, so you can just say that this one is this parallel. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the cells, battery connections, independent, and then dependent sources. Okay. And then next week, okay, maybe Tuesday or Friday, we'll start discussing Kirchhoff's law, KCL or KVL. And then the uh, much more advanced method is the Maxwell loop, okay, or sometimes you call this one mesh. Okay. Oops. So this is a uh, correction. So never mind this one. So Remove this topic three. And then for week three, we'll discuss about theorems. Okay. So we'll talk about superposition theorem, modal method. Actually, the remaining topics are mostly theorems. So as you guys can see, superposition, Thevenin's, Norton's, and Millman's, and then maximum power transfer. So most of them are theorems. So let's just say that week three up to week six are mostly theorems. Okay. Just different types of theorems. Delta to Y, Delta Y and then Y to Delta. So this one is the, maybe the easiest part when it comes to finals. And the rest, we are quite difficult. Okay. Not really, not really difficult. Let's just see that maybe confusing. Okay. Because you have to uh, be familiar with the process with superposition, then be familiar with Thevenin's, Norton's, etc. Et All right. And then... Uh, here's the one ebook that I have found on the uh, internet. So you can download this one. Though this is not the one that uh, I am using right now, but this one is close enough. Okay. Like uh, there's actually a lot of information that is uh, really helpful also when it comes to learning the uh, electrical circuits. So this one already covered from week one to week six, not actually from week one to week six. There's actually a lot more topics that is in here. So if you're into electrical circuits, so if you want to practice a lot, so please download this one, okay? This ebook. So yeah, any clarification so far? Any clarification or questions? Any concerns? None here. None. Okay, coming from Mr. Ursula. So why not use your mic, guys? Okay. So instead of typing, it's faster to use your mic. Okay. okay so an answer coming from Mr. Samuel Santa Cruz. Anyway, so for the last one, which is the basis of evolution. So you guys already know this one. This is already uh been part of your life in the UCs, of course. Active participation is very important, especially nowadays that, yeah, I know that you guys are there, but uh, in some cases or in most cases, you guys are not really listening at all. So yes, you were here physically via connection to the Zoom meeting, but I don't really know if you guys are really listening or if you guys uh, are really into uh, the discussion part, okay? So, if possible, if I ask a question, be like, do you, do you guys have a question? Do you guys have a clarification? And so on and so forth. So, an answer of yes or no is already a big participation for me. Okay, Especially if you're the kind of person who clarifies things, like there is a part that you guys didn't understand or you didn't understand, and then you want a clarification right away, then that's uh, the highest part of participation. So meaning you're only showing that you're interested in the subject and then uh, you're really willing to learn okay, with uh, the subject. And then of course, uh, not only in active participating in class, but of course you have to participate also in our discussions. Okay, So actually in our modules right now, we have here the last part 
which is the interactions with students where it's covered uh, it's covered by discussion chat in back so anything but mostly discussion so i would like you guys to participate on this also so mostly i put a score here 10 points 15 points or sometimes 20 points but for now since uh, i haven't think of a topic yet wherein you guys will be able to you know say your thoughts or your feedbacks regarding with the facts so i'll inform you guys soon okay but not for now since i haven't really think uh, a topic yet so inside of it there's only two parts which is the facts and then the question so i'll give you guys a scenario or a facts or any information and then here's the questions and then just say your feedback okay so don't worry when it comes to discussion there is no incorrect answers okay that is why we call this one discussion to discuss things you know to learn more about a certain topic to enlighten us that what is really uh the correct information regarding with this uh facts that that were given okay so what else and yeah successful oh sorry quizzes assignments and an examination so you guys already know this one so that would be a, a very big part of your class standing and then of course examinations will be your exams and then successful completion of all the requirements of the course so this is very important especially if there are major requirements that i keep you guys like for example quizzes so those are the very uh, most important part uh, when it comes to completing a certain subject or a certain course so yeah you can skip the assignments like that literally literally skip but you can uh let's say you can uh call this one not answer okay or not uh or will not submit some of the assignments but when it comes to quizzes you must complete all of them okay because they are the one who's giving you a high points when it comes to grading so as you guys may all know Quizzes is a lot more important uh, than assignments and secrets. Okay. And then of course examinations. So even though you have a high grade of 95, but you wasn't able to uh, take your final exam. So still, you're going to have an incomplete grade. Okay. So yeah, let's just see that you have already passed the subject, but I will not give you your final score if you don't have your examinations okay and then the standard grading uh, system of university uh, will be the same still the same so 50 percent 50 50 will give you the midterm score and then 50 50 for the tentative final score and then if you're now solving for the final score so it could be now the one third of your midterm score and then two thirds of your tentative final score okay so a fun competition so you must at least get so there's a correction in here so you must at least get a score of 60%. Okay. So as you guys may already know, the passing score in UC is 60%, not 50%. All right. So 60% is an equivalent of 75. Okay. So are we clear with this one so far? Yes, sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. All right. So again, if there are parts that you guys didn't understand, so let me know as soon as possible so that we can discuss that part. All right. So let's now move on to your modules. So again, to those who haven't submitted their one minute video yet, so please submit them uh, today. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the module overview for the week one. All right, so under uh, module one, which is Ohm's Law, Heat, and then Energy. So, of course, here are the topic learning outcomes. Okay, so, of course, we're going to define the electric circuit. We're going to talk about Ohm's Law and different types of circuit, which is series and parallel. And then we're also going to define uh, electric power. Okay, so what happens? if we have this electric power and then into heat energy. 
Okay? And then lastly, heat energy. Okay? So basically, those two are couples wherein if there is electric power, there is also heat energy. If there is heat energy, there is always electric power. Okay? So this is only in terms of electrical circuits, okay? With the use of uh, electricity. But of course, there is a lot of ways to create heat energy. Okay? But in here, uh, you're going to use electric power. And then here are the list of topics. So electric circuit, Ohm's law, series and parallel, and then combinational circuit. And then the other two, which I wasn't able to list here, is the electric and then heat energy. Okay, so when it comes to learning resources, so I've only uploaded, so I've only prepared one module okay, or one PDF, which is entitled, so this is the updated title, but I wasn't able to update the title of this one. Supposedly, the title of this electric circuit and Ohm's law is electric circuit, Ohm's law, types of circuit, and then electric and heat energy. So it's quite uh, long. Anyway, but this one that I'm talking about, uh, the PDF or PowerPoint, is uh, this module one, electric circuit, and then Ohm's law. Okay. And then when it comes to video materials, so there's actually a lot more that you can uh, find on the YouTube okay, or, on the, or on the internet. But here are the things that I think which is you know super straightforward when it comes to explaining things. Okay, like what is electrical circuit? Like this is only like two minute video, electrical card, and so on and so forth. Like this one already covered the Ohm's law, the charge, the power, physics problems, and then basic electricity. So this one is quite complete, but uh, only the basics. And then here are more information when it comes to Ohm's law. And then here are other links when it comes to series and parallel type of circuit. And then lastly is for the power. Okay. So we have here part one, part two to part three. Right. So yeah. And then again, here's the reading materials that you can read, which is the same with our syllabus. Okay. So this is the second, uh, second vision. I forgot the name of the author, but uh, yeah, this one is also very helpful. So please download this one. And then for your references or reference, rather, uh, since there's, there's only one for this module one, is this one. Okay. This uh, topics that I have here came from, or mostly came from, all about circuits. Okay, so you can uh, always click this link will lead you to uh, all about circuits. So it, covered, it covers there the uh, how the voltage work, how the current uh, work, resistance, and then uh, next one is the heat, and then the energy, and then types of circuit, etc., etc. So all about circuits is uh, like your partner when it comes to electrical circuit. Okay. So this is one good website that I can uh, recommend to you guys. Okay. All right, so that's it for the overview. Oops, do you guys have a question so far regarding with this uh, overview for week one? Hello, po. Hello, naman, sir. Malinaw naman, sir. So, if ever that uh, we'll be able to finish the module, I mean, yeah, module one uh, today. So, of course, we're going to discuss the module two next meeting, which will be on Friday. So I will just upload this one. I mean, uh, update. Okay, I will just update this one soon for the lecture presentation, for the video materials, and then uh, for the references and so on and so forth. So that you know, just in case that you'll be able to finish the module one today. All right, and to those who are maybe waiting for my announcement for the uh, link for the Zoom meeting. So all of the Zoom links will now be able to, I will now be able to found here. Okay, so you can find it on the Zoom links for synchronous class meeting. So just left click this one and then it will lead you to this uh, interface. So as you guys can see, so the starting time is 3.30 p.m. and then the date is February 23. And then as of now, we are still in part one. So later on, of course, we're going to have a part two and then part three. And if we still need to, you know, finish the module, 
So we're going to have a part for it ever. Part one, part two, and part three is not enough. All right? And yeah, so that's it for the Zoom links for synchronous class meeting. And then learning page materials. So as you guys can see, I have already uploaded the module one in here. So please download uh, download it now so that you can have your own copy. Okay, so by left-clicking this one, so it will show you the uh, PDF itself. So as you guys can see, it's like a PDF viewer. But if you want to have the uh, copy of this PDF, so just click this one, download module one, electric, electric circuit and pumps law. All right, so this one has a size of 3.15 um, megabytes. And regarding with this one, open educational resources or OER. So this one is composed of captured lecture videos, watch videos, or even supplementary reading materials, but mostly reading, uh, mostly uh, video materials. Okay, I will not post here the reading materials. So I'll just put it uh, on here, learning materials. So in here, everything that you will find on this uh, page are the videos that I have uh, recommended. Okay, so this one can also be found on the syllabus. Okay, so quite similar with the syllabus or the module one overview. Okay, so this is where I will also uh, put the links of the recorded Zoom meeting. So later on, once we're done with our meeting, let's say part one, part two, and part three, so after maybe 30 minutes, once I'm done in uploading those videos in YouTube, and that's time that you'll be able to find the link in here. Okay, so part one, part two, and part three. And we have here practice exercises or drill. So this practice exercises could be graded or not graded. So for uh, right now, okay, so I haven't, uh, prepared one yet, but maybe tomorrow or this uh, night, I'll be able to give you guys a practice exercises. So this is very important, especially if you're going to have a quiz, let's say next meeting or next next meeting. So practice exercises are quite maybe 50% similar with our quiz or assignment. Okay. So mostly when we say practice exercises, they are not graded. Sometimes if you're lacking, say you're lacking points to have a passing score or a passing rate, so maybe I'll give or I'll get some of your scores in here in practice exercises. Well, that is only if you have uh, or if you if you participated in this practice exercises. But if I cannot find anything, then I won't be able to uh, give you plus points. And then under assessment, so as you guys can see, I haven't uh, put uh, a quiz or assignment yet. But later on, I'll give you guys an assignment. So this one, and then maybe soon, I'll give you guys a quiz for this module one. Okay, but not right now. Okay, and then lastly is the discussion. Okay, so we have already discussed this one a while ago. So yeah, that's it for the. Uh, short introduction with your syllabus and then the overview of your module one. So any question or clarification so far? None, sir. None, sir. None, sir. None, sir. Okay. None, sir. So I think we still have, I don't know, I'm not sure. I think we still have 15 minutes. So let us not waste our time anymore. So let's now start with our discussion. Okay, so oops, 10 minutes. Okay, so we still have 10 minutes. So we have already received the warning. Anyway, so let us now start. So as you guys can see, here are the topics that we're going to discuss. So we'll start with electric circuit. What is electric circuit? And then afterwards, we'll discuss Ohm's law. So this is the relationship of your resistance, voltage, current, etc., etc. And then the types of circuits. So you guys already know this one. We, we have series and then parallel. 
for the combinations, which is series parallel or parallel series 3D. And then lastly, we have here the heat and then energy or electric heat. All right, so let us start by defining what is electric circuit. So an electric circuit is, of course, a circuit, okay, which composed of electrics. Simple, right? But of course, not just an electric circuit, okay? So it must be a path wherein it should be a closed path where, wherein uh, electrons uh, from this side, let's say, from the battery, will be able to pass through the entire loop and then will go back to our source. So if we have that kind of uh, flow in our circuit, or we have that kind of path, which is we call closed path, okay, then that is already considered as an electric circuit or a working electric circuit. Okay, so no matter how complex your circuit are, if it doesn't have a closed path or if it doesn't have a flow of electrons in one uh, point to uh, another point then that is not a working electric circuit. So just, it's just a circuit okay, that doesn't have an electric. All right, so the point where those electrons enter an electrical circuit is called the source, okay? So from this point, okay, so this is our source. It is giving us electricity, okay? And that it will pass through our load and then it will go back to our battery. So once it goes back to our battery, we call it one return, okay? Or the earth ground, or just simply the ground. And then if you guys may have noticed, so as you guys can see, we have here the longer line, okay? This one represents the positive side of the, uh, let's say, battery or voltage source. And then the shorter one is the ground, okay? or the negative uh, part of your battery. So as always, we have positive and negative, okay? And then it must have a closed path. So this switch must be closed for you to have a working electric circuit, All right? So as of now, since the switch is open, then we don't have a flow of electrons in the circuit. So this is just a circuit, okay? But not an electric circuit. Okay, so are we clear with this one so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so again, when say electric circuit, it must be a closed path. Okay, there must be a flow of electrons. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. So the part of an electrical circuit that is between the electrons which is the starting point, And then uh, the point where they return to the source is called an electrical circuit load. So as you guys can see right here, the point that uh, it enters to our uh, load, we call that one the starting point, okay? So this is where the electrons starts working. So wire, so it's just a path for our uh, electrons to, you know, to walk. It's like a road or it's like a street. But once it may be uh, bump or it crosses to a certain uh, component, say light bulb, uh, yeah, light bulb. Then uh, from that point, we call that one the starting point. And then as it leaves this uh, load, we call this one the return to the source uh, point of your battery. Okay. So again, we call this light bulb as your load. So this light bulb, I mean, this load could be any device that you have okay, that can be powered up by electricity. So basically, of course, home appliances. So any appliances that use electricity is called load, okay? So that loads consumes a voltage, okay? So it could be a refrigerator, televisions, lamps, uh, what else? Hydroelectric power, generating station, etc., etc. So there's a lot more that uh, we can call a load, right? And then we have here two types of current, okay? So as you guys may all know, the one that we're going to use is the DC or the direct current. So from the word itself, direct current. So it's just one line of current, okay? Like it's a consistent current, okay? So this is the direct current. 
So here's the magnitude. Let's say it's consistently, uh, uh, let's say, 220 volts. Let's say is my assumption. And then right here, we have here the AC, which is the alternating current. And then as you guys can see, this one is ranging from, let's say, starting from zero, it will go up to positive 220. And then as time goes by, it will go back to zero again, and then it will reach the negative uh, current or electricity, which is, let's say, negative 220. So this one now is ranging from 220 to uh, negative 220. So we call that one the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of this uh, magnitude. So, and so on and so forth. So just keep on repeating by itself. Okay. So yeah. So for alternating current, so this one often uh, often powers large appliances and motors, and is generated by power stations. Okay. So the outlet that we have uh, in our home right now is let's say having an output of 220 volts, but it's not uh, actually consistently 220 volts. So sometimes it's reaching 250, so even 300, or let's say even negative 250, okay? So the only time that it will become, you know, a direct current is once we have converter. So one good example of that one is the power brick of our laptop. So the charger of our laptop, it has uh, this, you know, thick size of thingy on your uh, laptop, which is the power brick, okay? That one converts the AC into DC, okay? So our laptop needs a DC current or DC power since, you know, we don't want your components inside to receive random uh, voltages. So it must be a consistent, say, 120 volts or 220 volts or whatsoever. So those are the difference when it comes to AC and DC. So AC, alternating current, okay? And then DC, uh, consistent current, okay? So this one is mostly uh, used by battery, vehicles, and other machines and electronics, okay? So if we have DC source, of course, we can convert this DC into AC. And vice versa, if we have AC source, we can also convert this one into DC, okay? So we call that one AC-DC or DC-AC converter, right? So are we clear so far? Yes, sir. Apo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So since we don't have enough time anymore, we just only have one minute left. So we will just continue the rest on the part two and part three. Okay. So we're lucky enough if we'll be able to finish this one on part two. Okay. Anyway, so I will end our meeting for now and then just wait for the link on the part two. Okay, so goodbye for now and then see you guys later on. Okay.